Welcome, welcome, welcome to 239 Uncensored Everything Southwest Florida and beyond. And I'll tell you what, we have the best podcast that we've ever done on uh, 239 Uncensored. We have Mayor Bill Barnett. Mayor Bill, guess what, Bill? You're Mayor Bill to me. I don't give a fudge what anybody says. You are Mayor Bill, and you always will be. I've known you for a long time, and welcome to the studio. What do you think about this place? I, I think it's outrageous. I mean, I love it. If I could have had a place like this, man, I might just move in here. Well, you know? we're thinking about it, you know. We yeah, just... <laughs> I can understand that. But this place is like, wow, Dreamsville. Yeah, well, yeah. thank you. It's it's a great place. We're looking forward to a lot of a lot of future podcasting in here. A lot of fun. And we you're always welcome to come here. We love you imagine we have the mayor of Naples. Four-time mayor. Well, you better say former, otherwise somebody's going to come after my Oh, ass. fuck that. Forget <laughs> that, Bill. We, we're going to talk about that All a little right. bit. Okay. But, hey, you know what? We have, we, it's just, I'm honored and proud to have you in our studio. This is just great. Um, tell me a little bit about, we're going to get into the other stuff, and I know we've got a lot of it. We're going to get other stuff in a little bit. Okay. But tell us a little bit about how you ended up in Naples. Give me a little bit about okay, that. Re- you, you mean so much to me and so much to our community. So 48 years ago, 1973. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was selling cars up in uh, White Plains, New York. Right. And uh, a friend of mine moved to Marco Island. And he calls me. And he says, hey, you got to come down and see. This is the most beautiful place you've ever seen in your life. And so I was kind of between jobs. I was running a used car lot for a friend of mine. And I said, okay, let's do it. So my former wife and I got, up, got on a plane left the kids at home, came down, drove into Naples. Uh, it was, Alligator Alley was on fire that night. I'm not kidding. It was oh. one of those times where, you know, Mother Nature lights it up and lightning Unbelievable. and fire. And get into Naples, stay at a, a corner of uh, where Coastland Wall is, uh, Mooring Line Drive. Yep. Um, Out and, in the country back then, yeah, probably. Yeah, in the country. <laughs> well, 41 was Tulane. I right. mean, it wasn't shit here. And, right. and so uh, two restaurants. You know, but we rode around the next day, um, spent one day here. Couldn't find a cigarette butt on a street, no paper. Everything was just so pristine. And we made a decision. Let's go to Naples. We're going to move here. Didn't know a soul. And uh, that's how it started. Then I opened up a, um, a Scotty muffler shop. Okay. Because nobody in Naples had a place where you could get a car muffler changed. And uh, Scotty was like, muff- was like Midas. Okay. 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 So right where Dr. Johnny, you know where Dr. Johnny yeah, is on 4th yeah. North. So Dr. Johnny. Dr. Johnny, um, I had, there was a little car wash there, coin operated. I knew I was going to have a great stay in Naples for forever because the day we closed on that little place and we were going to redo it and, you know, put the lifts and all that stuff in, the coin boxes were there, right? Now you would have thought if you were selling to me and you want to close on the, on the property and everything, you'd be empty those coin boxes, right? Mm-hmm. Uh-uh. Quarters pouring out like you hit the slot machine in Vegas, and you know, it was like, "Oh my God, we're gonna, we're we're gonna kill it here." This is the so, place. So then uh, uh, we opened it up. We did. Well, my bro- my uh, former brother in law, and his family came down with us, and then um, I got a call in seventy five. Okay, <clears throat> and and the guy said, "Hey, you're a car guy, right?" And I said, "Yeah." They said, "Hey, you know the Toyota dealership out there on Davis Boulevard is for sale?" And I said, "Toyota, awesome." I didn't know what a Toyota was. Who knew what a Toyota was in 1975? Back in 75, right? Nah, nobody. Right, right. Nobody. So I went out there, and I'm thinking used cars. Um, two guys that owned it, Briggs and Schuert, all right? Um, two good old boys. I mean, they, they were, and they wanted out, and I wanted in. And if I had just, just met you or Sean, I would have borrowed money from you, okay? Because I didn't have much cash. So made a deal with them. Uh, had to get approved by Toyota. Went over there to Boynton Beach or wherever the hell they were, and... Um, I didn't realize how bad they wanted to get these guys out. Wow. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, Toyota was kind of up and coming. But 76, gas crisis. Okay. Toyota became a household name. 78, BMW comes along, knocks on the door. Hey, we're looking for a home. What are you? You know what a BMW was in 78? Hell no. No. No, nah, nah, nobody no. did. German car, maybe. Right, right. That's right. about right. it. Yeah, yeah, German car, right? Yeah. And, uh, you know, long and short of it is... Uh, they weren't looking for franchise fees. They weren't looking for, for anything, just a home. I said, how many cars I got to sell a month? Like four. Okay, hell, if I have to give them away, that's a good, you know, we'll, we'll do it. So um, 
Got BMW, sold out to Jermaine in uh, 83. Nice. All right. Uh, he kept coming at me, coming at me, coming at me. Finally, my accountant said to me, he says, I don't give a shit how much you love this business. He <laughs> said, you got a two-year non-compete clause, okay? And uh, so you can go, you know, do whatever the hell you want. Um, and they're going to buy the property. And, and, I mean, they will, you're going to be their lessee. And, um, I mean, they're leasing from you, whatever the hell it is. And then at the end of 10 years, they're going to buy it at a praise value. And I said, that's awesome. So I sold out to them and I never did go back to the car business because, uh, I got roped into somebody said to me, Hey, you know, you ought to run for Naples city council. I said, yeah, what is it? I didn't even know. I, I swear to God, I didn't know whether we had a mayor or not. Then there was no politics in my family. And so, um, Started in 84 on, on Naples City Council and never looked back. Doing charity and all that stuff like you get so involved in. And, uh, hey, shit, here we are how many years later? <laughs> oh, it's <laughs> yeah, it's been a lot. With 2021, wow. we're here. And, you know, I've known you for a long time. I, we met through a mutual friend, Rick Wabi, a long time ago. Oh, yeah. And then, uh, you know, we got a little bit closer as we got with uh, – uh, GL Gianluca Corso. Oh. He's over in Italy. Great guy. And, uh, you know, Cosmos Pizza. We, we, we got to just a little shout out for that place. Mayor Bill. <laughs> Mayor Bill. Mayor Bill. Hey, hey, hey. Yes, yes, Mayor Bill. Gianluca, he always wants me to know. He says, hey, want, want to do a radio spot with me? I said, but Gianluca, they... they, they they don't understand what you're talking about. How can I do a spot with you? And we laugh. He's oh, a great I know. Guy. I know. That's why he sells a shit pile of pizza. Oh, he does. Because no one understands what the fuck he's right, saying. Right, right, right. <laughs> so, he, 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 he is awesome. No, he's just a great guy. He's a great guy and, and, a, and a good friend. So you talked and touched on it a little bit, but why did you get in politics, Ben, back then? Well, seriously, um, the guy I used to play tennis with back then, he's the one that said to me, um, you ought to, you know, you know all the people in Naples, okay? I mean, it was small then. We're looking at 1984, so it wasn't, you know, I mean. Right. And um, I, he said, you would be great. And I said, what would I be doing? I said, you're representing the citizens of the city of Naples, okay? And I, I thought it sounded like a good gig. And so I said, okay, what do I have to do? I said, well, you got to run for election. I said, okay. I didn't know at the time that there was a guy they hated. They couldn't stand him, all right? And he was an incumbent, and he was up for re-election. And they had to find some sucker that could beat his ass. Now, this was city council? That's the city council. Okay, okay. Yeah. So they're looking around, and here I am, right? Bright-eyed, bushy-tailed, sold the dealership, uh, not doing much, but some volunteer work. And um, they said, here's a guy that can beat Harry Rothschild. That was his name. And uh, sure enough, it happened. And then here I find myself sitting on a city council seat and not knowing what the hell to do okay but i had six great mentors because every one of those council people okay that i that i was serving with and the mayor they all had had full-time lifetime careers they were all right. top execs and had retired here to naples and so they mentored me so one term turned into another and uh you know the next thing you know and we ran for mayor and in uh, 1996, um, and, you know, that was another story. I mean, um, I had termed out on council. You can serve two four-year, I mean, you could do two four-year terms on council. Right. So I did 84 to 88, and 88 to 92, I'm out. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so in 95, um, someone came to me and said, you know, you ought to run for mayor. And I said, run for mayor, I said, this is almost November and the election's in February. You got it. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> you got That's it. it. I said, hey, go yeah. for it. And you so, it. Uh, you know, um, we, had had a, we had a tragedy in the family. We lost a daughter and um, it was a tough time for us. And uh, so my wife was up in Staten Island with, with, an, with my other daughter and um, I'm sitting at the bar at Bistro 821, right? right? This is yeah. where it happened, right? And Donna Fiala, Commissioner, Donna, yeah, Commissioner Donna, Fiala, yeah, love her. She, she wasn't uh, the commissioner then. She's working for the hospital. Came okay. up to me, and she's the one that said it. She said, you ought to run for mayor. You know, there's only one person running, you know, and he was a council member, former council member of mine, nice guy named Ron Pennington. So I ran against him for mayor. We announced, uh, made a call, got Dudley Goodlett, John Pasadomo, the next day had a campaign committee going. All, all right. right. And they pissed me off like you can't believe because here I got two months to go. 
And they said, this is my campaign managers, right? They said, listen, um, $100 a person, no more. I'm looking for thousands, all right? I mean, we got to build up some money. We got to win this thing. I said, nope, $100 a family. That's it. I said, okay. So it worked. But I was really pissed. I said, you guys, I, I'm going to get killed. I mean, there's no way I can do this. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and it goes back to, you know, just real quick, go back to, to 84 when I ran for council. Um, they found me a campaign manager, an old Chicago politician. And bless his soul, Gil Weil. He made me go out banging on doors. He, he said, you know, <laughs> I don't care how well these people know you in this city. You're, you're going out there and we're going to do door to door and we're going to whatever. And I'm thinking, oh, man, what the hell did I get myself into? <laughs> so there you go. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. Well, and, and obviously if you got involved with it at that stage um, back then, I, I, I've moved to Naples in, in 90, so I've known about you and and I've well we know I knew you yeah when you first got here uh, when I first got here in the Florida Marine Patrol running yep. around in a police yep. boat but you just obviously you have a passion for Naples and it's it's very obvious and and usually when Naples is brought up Mayor Bill's brought up a lot of the same goes back and forth you've been here for a long time and that really is is probably such a good thing every everything about Naples probably had a little connection to you and that must feel great. Well, you know, and it's true. And I never say anything about that. I mean, even running for office this last time, um, w which was a bitch. Okay. But <clears throat> you know, I could have gotten up there and said, well, you look around Naples and there's going to be a connection with me there, but that sounds like pompous. Uh, right. That's not me. It's not bill. No, definitely not. But, um, yeah, I mean, golden gate overpass, uh, the mall, I fought Penny Taylor, over Coastland Mall. I remember. Yeah, yeah. Expansions and she, all the different yeah, things. Yeah, well, she didn't want any part of that any mall there. And her her reason was because she lives in Lake Park, okay? Right. And there'd right. be people, and so we worked that out. But yeah, yeah. But that passed. But I mean, we'd go back and you could tell stories all day long about things that are associated with, you know what I mean? Yeah, the connection. And you look back, yeah, you, the connection. And you look back and you think, oh my God, I remember that. Yeah. yeah. So, so I know this last mayor race was was a bitch. I live in Collier County, but right. you're my mayor because you're Naples. You represent <laughs> Naples. Had I would have known it was going to even be close, my ass would have been out there at every door, <laughs> knocking on doors, doing a hell of a lot more. I I just think with the circumstances that were going on, right? And I kick myself in the ass every day for not jumping because we expected it. We expected the win. Tell us a little bit about that. Okay, so so we, you know, start the campaign. I mean, it was a, it was an automatic. I was going to run. Okay, and I kept telling the committee, guys, don't take anything for granted. All right, don't do it because Heitman is. Uh, she served on council with me, probably the one of the worst ever. Okay, served her eight years there, and then disappeared off the face of the earth. All right comes back and decides she's going to run for mayor against me, and she waits till November, and the election's February, um, actually March. Uh, pandemic is starting, all right? Right, right. Um, and she was really well organized. All the old Naples Association people, they really got behind her. I had a great group of people, North Naples, I mean North Naples, I say Park Shore, GSAC, you know, Gulf Shore Boulevard, and friends like we're talking about all over the place, all right? And we got a lot of signs, we put them out. And pandemic really hurt. I'm not making excuses. No, no, I know I you're not. We've had that discussion that. before. Yeah, you're not. Yeah. So what happens after the election? She gets elected, all right? And I happen to be walking the neighborhood the next day, just kind of, you know, you pretty beat up. But uh, And I run across Coach, uh, Coach Bill Kramer from, you know, Naples, Naples High. He's a neighbor. And he said to me, I got to apologize to you. And I said, for what? And he said, see all the signs around the yards here in your neighborhood? And I said, yeah. He says, well, I've had friends come up to me, and they said, we feel so bad. And he says, well, well we feel bad, too. Mayor Bill lost, but why well, especially? Well, because we knew he was going to win, so we didn't vote. Yeah. And that was a kick in the ass because that I had more people say that to me, okay? They were so sure that I was going to win, and yet she had all her voters and the people that were lined up they made sure if they had to drive them to the polls, Committed. they got there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 So, and then, you know, you come to today and say, what the hell is going on in the city today? 
okay? And, and, and I could tell you um, the best analogy I can give you of what's happening to the city is, well, you lo- we're losing great employees, okay? They're quitting. Another 30-year guy left yesterday, resigned yesterday. But it's like the people that are in, on the outside that live in the city that don't really pay a lot of attention. It's like going to Publix and seeing this beautiful cantaloupe, all right? I mean, gorgeous, just perfect. You take it home, great on the outside, and you open it up, and it's rotten and because it's rotting from the inside out, okay? And um, that's what's happening downtown, and it's, it's sad. A shame. It's a yeah, shame. Yeah, it is it's a, a shame. shame. But, uh, hey, you know what? And then the other stuff that you were going to bring up. Yeah, so <laughs> the elephant in the room, right? Elephant in the room. The elephant in the room. Yeah. What the fudge is going on with all this? I mean, it's crazy. Just give me a just a, a shake here. Okay. So um, – Things are going fine. We're thinking about the next election. Not, I'm not, I'm not running. Okay, for anything. Okay, but we're thinking about the next election coming up next February, city council election. Okay, and we want to get some of these guys out. All right, and we want to get some candidates, good candidates, and get them in. So I'm working with some people on that and whatever. And all of a sudden, I hear this rumor: there's going to be a pretty big announcement on Tuesday night, May something. Okay, it's going to come to all the council members at seven o'clock, and it's an email. All right, and um, okay, and I had a friend said, hey, we'll get you a copy of it when it comes in. So my phone rings at about 10 o'clock that night, and the voice on the internet says to me, oh, my God, you, you, you're going you're gonna to shit when you see this, okay, and hear this. And I said, what? He said, the um, IT director for the city of Naples filed an ethics complaint against the mayor, Teresa Heitman, okay, and you got to read it, seven pages. But in that seven pages, the IT director, the city manager, Heitman, and a friend of Heitman's were sitting in a room, and they heard her say that Bill Barnett and Sheriff Kevin Rambosk had been running a child prostitution ring at Naples Community Airport, and they had proof they knew the tail numbers, they knew whatever it is. And I'm thinking to myself, that this is not happening okay this is bullshit and um so that's the elephant in the room now she adamantly denies it but what's going to happen is he filed it with the state state ethics commission okay i filed an ethics complaint against her as well right we just got to get him heard and it just takes time that's all but she keeps saying no i i never said that well there's there's some witnesses out there that heard her say it so um but it's not the idea Saying it or not, it's out there. Okay, it's out there. Everybody in the world that knows me knows. It's like, and Sheriff and Kevin. I mean, come on, you're going to pick on two guys because there's a grudge somewhere in there. It's crazy. Yeah, well, we it's haven't crazy. figured out what the grudge was, but obviously he, 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 one of the deputies busted her kids for something, okay? And there's, she had a, a hit list, so to speak, of people that she didn't like from when she was on council years ago, okay? And, and she was determined to get rid of them one by one by one by one. New city manager, okay? I had hired him. Um, gone, okay? You t- our uh, human resources director, gone. I mean, the list just goes on. And I'm telling you, she's just not a nice person. I'm putting it mildly on uncensored because I could really say some more. But, <laughs> you know you what know. bothers me, though, and, and we've discussed it, is, and I've had some of this recently, is people sling shit yes. on a wall and see what sticks. Yes. But the problem is, is when they say something so outlandish and so far out of whack, how do you maintain your composure, number one, and clean and clear your reputation? Well, okay, I got to go back to something, though. You just said it, and, it, and it's really great. You know, the, the sheriffs, I don't know what it is. It's online. Um, it's not us here. And, and it's kind of like a, a gossip site, like people or people can talk and make their comments. So Naples Daily News used to have that shit, you know, where you could just. But it, it's there because my wife, Chris, found it the other day. And she says, oh, my God, you got to read this. And these people are commenting about, she, about Kevin Rambosk, okay, and about me and saying, oh, my God, they should be locked up. Oh, oh, my God, I wouldn't put, trust my kids around this. And it's like. People, you haven't got a clue what's going on, but they're just, like you said, they're... Blogging they, and that type of thing. They're throwing shit on a right. wall, okay, and seeing what's sick. Blogging, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, the biggest thing is, is that obviously there was no truth in it, and, and we both said it, and we're both really steaming. When I say we both, uh, the sheriff and myself are steaming. And 
the old story, what goes around comes around. People that know me, and most of them do, you know, I'm, I'm not taking any heat. As a matter of fact, I'm taking more jokes than I am. Not right, that that's right. a fun. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, can I borrow one of your planes to run down to the Keys tonight? Can I do this? <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Shit like that. It's like, what? Because yeah, it's so outlandish. It, it, it is outlandish. And, and it's almost, you know, it's almost comical because it, I mean, it is comical, but it isn't because, as you say, how do you go protect your reputation? Not one ounce of proof. I mean, nothing. They don't have any more tail numbers uh, uh, than, than the man in the moon. I mean, it's just, there was nothing. And Chris Rosansky, the airport director, he about had a shit fit. I mean, he did. Uh, he said, what? And then the, the guy, um, Dave Elias from uh, NBC, does an interview with me, and uh, he was great. And he says, you know what? I went out to the airport, he says, and I saw a couple of pilots out there, and these guys have been flying in and out of the airport for, for 20 years. And they said, hell, we've never even seen a kid at this airport. <laughs> right? <It's> like, <laughs> no yeah, one under the age yeah, of 75 you know, at right, this right, Naples right. airport. Yeah, I mean, right, you know, right, and it's right. just so, it's, one, it's, just, it's just one of those things uh, that, you, um, that will come around, okay? And, um, you know, if you said, hey, you've got a goal for her, yeah, I'd like to run her ass out of office, really. Somebody should, because she's just, she's just, that's just the way it is. That's my personal feeling. I know a lot of other people feel that way, but uh, she's not a nice person. Yeah, that toxic environment, like you said, yeah. Naples is such a great place. And I, I know Sheriff Rambos personally. He's a really good friend, been an outstanding sheriff. I know you personally. These type of allegations and these type of comments are just... you. You can't really explain them. That's what that's what's kind of scary about the whole thing. I mean, I could see something, you know, maybe at a different level, but to be so outlandish and to make those comments against you folks, yeah. it, it really bothers me. Yeah, it when you when concerning. you think you're going to make an allegation against somebody, well, a you know, you, you need to. Well, let me just say something. So everybody says to me, "Why don't you go after her for slander?" You know, for. Um, uh, and all that. And I said, yeah. So I, I saw an attorney and he said to me, you know, Bill, the juice isn't worth the squeeze. He says, you'd get it, you know, but then what? Then you want to sue. You have to go through a civil suit. Then they're going to come after and go back 80 years for you and see, you know, oh man, he did this in 19, you know, 57 or whatever. He said, it's not worth it. He says, the way you're going about it, ethics complaint against her. You got a lot of evidence there. The one that's been filed by your, um, uh, IT director, that carries a lot of weight. And so we'll just wait that out. Yeah. And I think when those outlandish comments come up, it just comes back on them, uh, makes them look like yeah idiots. I, I, you know, like I said, I've had some people recently say some things about me. It just comes back and it, it's more of a, a joke. And, and the information is coming from disgruntled people, unhappy people. Right. And just jealous people so when it comes from that source everybody around looks and they understand it right but the problem is is if you're in that position you are the mayor of naples making those accusations right especially in today's age it goes in the newspaper and people that don't know you get a get a slanted view of who right. you are that's right. frustrating yeah i mean especially it'd be one thing you know if i did two years in in office okay but you know i had 28 years working for the city of Naples, representing the citizens of the city of Naples. And I think that says, that says it all. Absolutely. And then you say, Hey, well, you know, how do you defend yourself? Well, you really, it's not defending. It's the fact that, Hey guys, show me some proof or whatever. There's no truth to it. And most people understand it and believe it, you know? Um, and as I say, they, I get more static from it on a fun side, even though it's a serious subject. And I mean, a couple of charities that I serve and, and really, really care about, I had to speak to the board on one and let them know it was coming. Okay. Right. Um, and, and it's like, that's a hard thing to do and say, you, you might not believe this, but it's, it's out there and it's going to appear. And they all, they put a hundred percent support behind me. I said, well, that's, you know, and, but it is, you're right. It's on a daily life. And you know, if you have someone in the same, in a different situation with your own self, okay. That it's like, what the heck do I do? If I deny and deny and deny and deny, okay, I'm on the defensive all the time. And these people can just get away with it today. Look at the country. Yeah. I mean, you, you just get away with saying anything you want. 
I'm, I got to tell you this um, before we get booted here, but um, I read the New York Post every day. I don't know if you ever read it. I do. I read it. It's got some <laughs> yeah. juicy stuff in it. Um, <laughs> you know, best sports in the whole country yeah. in that paper. But, yeah. but it's just some of the things you read in there that they're talking about Governor Cuomo and uh, yeah. then they said uh, Mayor de, de, de Blase. Blase. Yeah. They said de Blase today. De Blase because, today, yeah. yeah. And um, it's like you can just say, you can just say shit that just, um, you wonder 20 years ago, could you do that? You'd have your ass sued off. Yeah. And the thing is, that's a concerning thing is like, how do you, I don't want to necessarily use the defense, but with the, I guess the Pelosi politics now, people throw stuff up and once it's up there, you know, with social media and right. all the things, it's stuck there for a while. It's right. almost impossible to really come back. 20 years from now, you're going to be able to type in Bill Barnett and right. you're hoping the good stuff. Tim Jurette, the good stuff. Right. Okay, 20, 31 years in law enforcement, you know, working on different boards. Right. Uh, working in the community, showing up where other people are bitching and complaining, never showed up, never right. showed up. Right. And you did. And well, I'm we did currently, the same I'm thing. currently on the same boards, you know, right. we, I'm, Big brothers, big sisters, right. youth haven all the years. And for someone to say and make these comments, it's it, it bothers me. And and the thing about it is, is some of these people that are making these comments at one point were pretty close to me. And I consider them loyal friends. And then for them to make these comments over politics is ridiculous. Well, you know, it just the, the last part of this is, um, and, you, and you just said it so well, they make these comments. I mean, we have been there. We have done that. Um, we have our own honor and respect we in do. the boards that we serve on where we, we shadow each other on a lot yeah. of them. Okay. And honor we, flight. Yeah. Oh, oh everything. That was the best. So much. Yeah. And, um, and for the people to make a remark like that, but the thing with me is she's denying and she says, well, I, I never made those. I never made that comment. Okay. Well, where did it come from? And this guy, Brian Dye, who is the, uh, the, uh, head of our IT as honest a guy as you would ever, ever, ever want to meet. He put his career on the line. It wasn't something he just thought of and put right. seven pages together. He put his career on the line. He asked for whistleblower protection. That's how scared he was. Yeah. So uh, we're going to find out who made the comments. Because, again, you could throw stuff out against somebody. I said, Tim Jarrett, oh, man, that guy's so bad. He doesn't do anything in this community. When we know you do everything in this com in this community. So it's a matter of sometimes you got to ignore it. Sometimes you take a little bite back, and sometimes you just say, "Hey, what goes around comes around, baby." Karma's a <laughs> bitch. Karma is a Karma's bitch. A bitch. <laughs> One last thing before yeah, we yeah. wrap it up. Yeah. Um, there's there's a, a couple <laughs> new things going on in Naples. Uh, the Four Seasons is coming in. Well, we um, we hope it is. Or maybe, yeah. I so mean, you might be fill us in on that. Maybe. Well, these guys, I mean, there's one guy who's got a suit filed because he's got some property ownership, or he says he does. Here's a guy that's bankrupt, okay, horrible reputation. I'm not making this up. He's suing one person at a time. He's got a group of his cronies lined up to file these nuisance lawsuits, okay? This is a multi 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 million dollar project the four seasons where the old beach club was yeah. and they are pissed they they don't want it to happen and some of the members of council don't want it to happen and they'll do what they can to stop it okay and look at the watkins family they've been here for yes. what, 30 yes. 40 50 years Mary Beth and uh, i mean i mean so it's like you see, it's like just like we're talking about yeah, so Four Seasons coming to Naples, Florida will be amazingly beautiful, awesome for all of us. First class project all the way. Oh, yeah, it's great. These people, the, the Athens group that's doing that project, you ought to look at their portfolio of the places across the world, around the world that they've done. Man, you'd like to vacation there at any one of them at any time. And I know you like to travel, so <laughs> next thing I'm going to be doing is looking up, where the hell's Tim Jarrett? I'm, I'm, That's some bitches in Bahi Bahi <laughs> doing whatever. Uh, oh, uh, I was just back from New York City this yeah, weekend. Yeah, I know you were. Helen, Helen, Georgia. But I, I was talking to Sean, um, my uh, good friend, business partner. He said that these, I guess the top floor on this four seasons, they're looking at something like $70 million or some crazy number. But whatever it is, it's like, I can only imagine it's first class all the way. Why would we not want something first class in our in our community? There's no answer. Yeah. There's no answer. There you had thirty people on South Golf Drive alongside that golf course that didn't want the pickleball the the near them where they were gonna hear the noise. So they said, All right, we'll move it to the middle of the 
of the course, you know, so, but they're just not happy. Yeah. And they want to upset the apple cart. And you know what? How does it make Naples look when you get a group like this? Yeah. Yeah. Small majority sometimes, well, you know, squeaky, it. squeaky wheel, you know, gets the grease. But Mayor Bill, I, I, I love you. You know, you're such a good guy, down to earth, good friend, just super, super person. Well, I say that. And Chris I, is the best, too. Thank well, you. I mean, she is. The, the whole I, family. I, I say this, you know, to you as well. Um, you know, we have known each other for a long time. Rick Wabi, who Rick Wabi was my best man. He's okay, great. 35 years ago. Okay. And you even admit that. He, he, oh, yeah. Yeah. He, he's a great guy. Yeah. And, and, and I don't get off. Do you see his latest accomplishment with the, yeah, uh, license, the license plate? Yeah, the license plate with the honor flight plate. That plates. is so awesome. The guy's incredible talent. Yeah, we got to have a, we got to have a few of those license plates. So one for each of us. Yes, you know, yeah, on yeah. a car. It's just great. But thank you for inviting me yeah. on uh, and, and Sean, too. It was, it's, this is really fun, and I'll come back. Yeah, Mayor I'll Bill, come back when this gets five. wrapped up. Yeah, you come back anytime, and when this gets wrapped up, I remember we gotta we gotta keep it keep it up there. Karma's a bitch, so things will yeah, things man. will work out for you and uh, uh, for and myself, you. and it'll Absolutely. be good. And uh, we're just having fun. We're tired having well, fun. My life is great. Hey, listen, that's why I wanted to come on here this morning. I happen to run across this, you know, this uncensored, and I'm thinking two three nine uncensored. What the hell is that? And then I went on and I figured out how to look at get the podcast up or whatever. And I'm saying. Man, I got to call Tim Dredd and get my ass on that show. Yeah, I love it. Anytime. You're on there. <laughs> Thank we, you. And we communicated. All right, 239 Uncensored, everything Southwest Florida and beyond. And, Bill, we are out. Out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 